print in a digital world. So listening to uh, my friend Joe speak this morning and thinking on the world of Dragon's Den, I was thinking I should really pitch this whole thing in a Dragon's Den kind of style and I'll come and I'll talk to you guys and I'll, I'll show you the wares and I thought, no, because my seven-year-old is performing The Wizard of Oz at his school. And he was looking at the deck as I was preparing it and he said, tell me a little bit about what you're doing. So I told him what I was doing and he said, actually, what you're doing is kind of like The Wizard. He said, you're, you're kind of predicting the future and you're showing people what they should expect. And I went, you've actually got a really good point. So, because of Halloween, being on our doorstep, because of my seven-year-old Connor, I am coming to you as the wizard today. <laughs> I've always kind of wanted to do that, always been a favorite sort of movie of mine. So, where is this crazy world going and what are we going to tell you? I'm going to take you right there. What does it take to stay close to a dad who's oceans away? A box of crayons? A fleet of paper airplanes? A next door neighbor with a box? and a delivery from overseas that make the distance disappear. Paper and Packaging, How Life Unfolds. So right out of the wizard's handbook, I went straight for the heart. <laughs> Thought I'd play into that seemed like a good place to go, but you know, that really shows that power of emotion, and you know, Deanna was showing that exactly, like, how do you connect with people? It is a, you know, marketing hasn't changed. It's still a human-to-human -human connection that we're actually looking for today, and how do we actually deliver that? So visualizing brand stories. So today I'm gonna to walk you through sort of a high level of our trend report. You can all get it outside uh, after, so you don't have to take notes madly in this, in this sort of format. But these are some of the top fun things that we sort of saw and really like, and just gonna walk you through some of the trends and pieces of that. Disruption, we hear disruption everywhere. We all have devices, we all have things we're carrying. It connects with us like instantaneously today, and we can access information in all kinds of different levels. So, how do we actually go beyond those swipes and taps and actually get that human connection today? And we're seeing brands as publishers wanting to come in and tell those stories. Who owns the relationship today? How do those relationships get owned? Is it, is it me as the publisher that owns that relationship, as the brand, or is it me as the retailer that owns that relationship? Or is it the online aggregator, let's just call them Amazon, that owns that relationship? So who's telling the best stories or the people that actually drive the relevancy and the value today? And you know, how does that all sort of evolve into our world of that sort of multiple touch points where we connect on different levels with people as they sort of go through their customer journey? That, those are some of the questions you have to sort of grapple with and some of the trends that we're seeing out there in the marketplace today. I had to bring up this really crazy one and I'm just gonna flip right to it. This is a magazine out of Brazil that encased their magazine in cement and are a construction company and very cool thing, but completely unexpected, completely different, totally surprising. Again, how do you drive a connection? How do you actually get your message across? I'm not sure. I'd have to look to Canada Post on this to see what the mail charge would be for like a concrete type of thing, maybe a special, but it, it, again, it's unexpected, totally different, interesting way to convey a vehicle. And what we're seeing out there with brands is that luxury component. People want to have great content. They want it shown in an interesting, compact way. People hug their magazines when we get them out there and give them to them. You, you see it with, you know, like brands that shoppers are putting, like Glow and Food and Drink. I mean, these things just get ripped off the shelf. And we'll never forget the fact that now there's 13 source books, polybag by Restoration Hardware, all printed. It's like a piece of furniture when it gets to your doorstep that People crave, they're asked for it. So they actually start printing more books that they started delivering at their stores. Again, talk about driving footfall 
Again, something that was a, a completely unexpected thing for people today. And I wanted to bring these ones up for a second. Burks is just is a beautiful magazine. Uh, it's something that people are now sort of desirous of, cut, follows through from North America. But the two that really catch your eye here are Airbnb and Uber. These are two of the biggest digital disruptors on the planet, and they're printing magazines to cut through the digital clutter. Like, how does that even sort of ring true? Wait, they've got everybody's ear, they've got everybody's eye. But these are really well-designed, well-put-together magazines that people actually covet and start to look for. It took me a while to get a hold of Pineapple, but when I got it, I, I went through this thing. It's, a, it's an incredibly engaging magazine that doesn't even sell Airbnb. It's, it's lifestyle. So you got to start thinking this way. I was watching this amazing piece uh, where Reid Hoffman, LinkedIn, was interviewing Eric Schmidt from Google the other day. And it was a Stanford University. They both teach lecture series there. And Reid was talking about his concept of called blitz scaling. And this is where a company can go from its infancy to global inside of six months, like these guys did. They understood the market, they understood a product, they understood how to scale it, and they went instantaneously driving that world of what we call the unicorn today. But the world enables you to do this today. It didn't, even with Facebook, Facebook took a long time, even though you think it happened fast, to scale. But Uber and Airbnb scaled instantaneously. They knew what they had, they perfected their product, they scaled in the market, and yet they're printing magazines. Again. What connects, what engages with your consumer, that's the important piece there. Volkswagen, I'll talk about Neutrogena first. This was really slick, this was really cool. It was, it was literally a, a, a pairing up of a, a magazine called Caras, and they did a partnership with Neutrogena to actually be able to take the makeup off the model on the cover to show what their wipes were like. Innovative, cool, it, interesting, it got people to talk about it, it got lots of media around it, uh, very different. But I'm going to bring up Volkswagen for a second. Why do I have Volkswagen, even in the world of Dieselgate today? But they had some cool stuff. So I, you know, they may be the kind of the wicked witch on my sort of wizard tour today. But I'm just going to play this piece for you, and you'll see why this, this has got big impact. Mud. Dirt. Insects. The scorching sun and deadly injuries. Ah, the great outdoors. Get there in seconds with the instant off-road kit from Volkswagen. When we launched the new Tuareg in 2015, we sent this handy kit to journalists to get their attention. It gets you to the Serengeti and back in five minutes without ever having to go there at all. Fact is, mate, most off-road cars don't make it further than the city borders. All right, maybe the IKEA store, but with the instant off-road kit, you can still tell a very convincing story. With a budget the size of a chihuahua, we got a lion's share of PR. See what I did there? 28 pages, including cover mentions. Convert that to money, and it's loads. Elephant size, that is. The instant off-road kit from Volkswagen. Again, that's mixing, marrying, matching in an interesting way. I mean, there were all kinds of other collateral pieces in this sort of omni-channel campaign that touched people, but again, they were they were selling something that was fun, it was interesting, it was exciting. I, I'm sure they've got an emissions kit program coming that you're going to see soon that's going to do something of interest, but you know, that's, that's not for me to say. <laughs> Connections are everywhere. Yes, they truly are. We're all connected. It's an always-on generation. I mean, I can't even believe the fact now that you know, I can pick up anything, be connected to anything, get information about anything. But the interesting thing about that is it's creating these really complex worlds out there. And, you know, I, I had this crazy conversation, take it, do the way back. In 1987, 
working for a large financial institution talking about mobile phones. And everybody's going, who wants to carry a mobile phone? Nobody's going to carry a mobile phone. Who would ever want to be connected all the time? And I'd say, well, I kind of do. And that was the phone I had. I, I had a car phone and I had a brick. And I was going, uh, I, I was probably paying like a gajillion dollars a second just to be talking mobile-like on that phone and probably actually getting muscle mass at the same time from just carrying it around. But that world has changed the very nature of the way we look at things. That, that digital and physical world, as we call that fidgetal world, is really starting to come together and, and you know, consumers hack it apart at their, at their will and desire today. So how do you actually get to them? How do you actually sort of uh, break that and, and go with the flow as opposed to, again, trying to intersect and do things that don't really connect with them? And the brands that are doing that are doing extremely well. Macy's, Omnichannel. They've got omni-channel directors, omni-channel people. They're, they're building omni-channel platforms. They, they keep talking that way because that way everybody sort of listens to it. And, and that is the way we connect so that when people come in, they can hit you from multiple different levels in multiple different ways so that, again, you bring them into your journeys and you can start to actually give them information and they pull it into their own closed networks. Toronto Life, which is one of our publications, is a really interesting one. I was talking to Ken Hunt, and Ken Hunt turned around, he's the publisher of Toronto Life, and he said to me, you know, if we didn't have magazines today, I'd actually invent a magazine to get bigger, deeper engagement with our customers and our audiences because that's what they love. The fact is, advertising and advertisers and marketers are pulling these dollars away from things that people love. So we got to look at where those engagements are coming from and how we actually start to create that because we're seeing magazines going the other way. We're seeing engagements and, and private label brands and, and people actually starting to build from that because that's the way they want to engage their customers today. So again, a very different way to take a look at things in, the, in that omni-channel model. IKEA uh, obviously goes omni-channel and just for Jennifer, I put in this, this next thing and I'm going to show you because she was talking about it this morning. But Frank and Oak, here's a millennial-driven totally cool store, run by millennials, invented by millennials, created by millennials, and they've got a complete omni-channel model with a magazine all baked in, and their founder says omni-channel all the way. Because we get it. People want to interact with our stuff in a very different way. It, it was interesting when we, we saw that piece with the Starbucks gold card this morning, I don't know if you remember it, and, dancing around and the happiness that came from getting that piece of mail and the, I mean, that's, that's emotional connection. That is, that is getting there and getting under people's skin and, and mixing and marrying. Well, Starbucks is amazing with their app, but they also know that surprise and delight go hand in hand in an omni-channel world. So I just want to play this, this one as a, a tribute to you, Jennifer. You know, once in a while, something comes along changes the way we live. A device so simple and intuitive, using it feels almost familiar. Introducing the 2015 IKEA catalog. It's not a digital book or an e-book. It's a book book. The first thing to note is no cables, not even a power cable. The 2015 IKEA catalog comes fully charged and the battery life is eternal. The interface is 7.5 by 8 inches but can expand to 15 by 8 inches. The navigation is based on tactile touch technology that you can actually feel. Content comes pre-installed via 328 high definition pages of inspiring and furnishing ideas. To start browsing simply touch and grab. Right to left to move forwards left to right to move backwards. Notice something else? That's right, no lag. Each crystal clear page loads instantaneously no matter how fast you scroll. If you want to get a quick overview, just hold it in the palm of your hand and using just your thumb, speed browse the content. If you find something you want to save for later, you can simply bookmark it. And even if you close the application, you can easily find the bookmark again. 
Amazing! What about multiple users? For that we've introduced a simple color coding system to avoid confusion. If you want to share a particularly inspiring item, you literally share it. Another special feature is password protection, which is voice activated. Excuse me, that's mine. At IKEA, we feel that technology, this life enhancing, should be in the hands of everyone. So the 2015 IKEA catalog is free. You can download one from your mailbox, the one you open with the key. If it's not there, try refresh the next day. Or you can upload yourself to the IKEA store and find one there. Experience the power of a book. So in the world of I everything, that's brilliant. I mean, you know, I did, it was Johnny Ives to a T, you know, introducing the latest, greatest titanium whatever. But again, smart, really interesting. It connected with us because we're inundated with the world of driving desire today. These two cool mashups are just, I, I love both of them. KFC. This is, this is truly, who wants to use their smartphone? And we all do it eating greasy food. I gotta let this one speak for itself as well. KFC is finger licking good. But for your smartphone, it's probably not. That's why we upgraded the ordinary paper tray with a keyboard that is durable, super thin, wireless, and even rechargeable. This is the KFC tray typer. Simply power it up connect your smartphone via Bluetooth. We handed out the tray typer at newly opened KFC restaurants so our fans can enjoy our finger licking good food and use their smartphones at the same time. And they did. Geolocated social media discussions skyrocketed and every single one of the smart paper trays was taken home. The KFC tray typer, finger typing good. You think of the, you think of the extension for that. People are taking it home, they're gonna be talking about it, they're gonna be showing about the cool thing that they did, and they're probably gonna display it to their friends and what's gonna be on their mind, KFC. There is a really interesting example of mixing, marrying, and understanding your audience and what they need and driving something out of a need state. Again, something that people want. I've got greasy food and I'm gonna be playing with my smartphone and I don't wanna do that, so eh, I've got a lot to type today, maybe I'll Maybe I won't go to KFC, or maybe I will because I'll get that cool tray typer and I'll actually get a lot of work done. Volvo. So you've all seen, or you should see, Google Cardboard and what it's doing today in the virtual reality space because this is paper folded up as cardboard that actually allows a virtual reality experience. You're going to see a lot more from this coming up because I've been talking to all kinds of different groups that are exploring it and trying it from condo developers to car makers to anybody that's got a visual experience. Well, I, hey, that's everybody. So I'm going to play this one for you. The all new XC90 is the new Volvo. It's the first car that represents a rebirth of the Volvo company. It has an intuitive design, very simple, very luxurious. We wanted for many people to experience the joy we feel around this car. The challenge was that the XC90 was not going to arrive in showrooms for many months yet. What we wanted to do is try to figure out a way that we could put people inside the car without the car physically being there. The solution that we came up with was to use Google Cardboard, which is a brand new, low-cost virtual reality platform. This is the first time any brand has done anything like this. We're shooting an immersive experience for Volvo. We're going to be taking the Volvo XC90 on a journey through the landscape here in Vancouver. We are obviously very colored by our Swedish heritage, open space, quietness, fresh air, those are the things that inspire us at Volvo. Those are the things we translate into the design of our cars. We've got eight cameras in an array here. There's about um, close to $800,000 worth of gear sitting behind me right now, which is pretty cool and a little scary. <laughs> We're going to be shooting on a 60-mile stretch of road. 
to try and collect all of this environment data. We're going to be blending this with a CG build of an interior of a car. The two will kind of seamlessly kind of integrate. We are indeed in CG and digital the camera positions that we need in order to capture the entire panorama around the driver and also the moonroof above him. The best thing about Google Cardboard is that it allows us to reach so many people. You fold this thing together, you slide your smartphone into it. As a user, it makes you feel like you're really inside the car. It is really a test drive for everyone. It's simple, it's playful, and also grown-up should be allowed to play a little. When you're in the experience, you'll be sat at the driver's seat of the Volvo. You can look around, you take in all the interior. What we've done here with Google Cardboard and Volvo is really the best of innovation because it's not just using technology for its own sake. It really does put people right in the center of the XC90. The XC90 changes the experience you have in a car and we wanted to bring that to everyone. Welcome to Volvo Reality. Okay, I so want that rig. No, not the car, the, the rig, that camera rig. Okay, I'd like both, maybe the car and the rig. But that, that's not only an amazing piece to show Google Cardboard and virtual reality and how, those, how you sort of mesh paper and technology together, that's an amazing show of storytelling and how you tell a story around it and what that story looks like behind the scenes. So again, that's how people are consuming today. That's what they want to see. So you've got to think about how that sort of engages people and what that looks like. More than ink on a page. So today, print is anything but traditional. It's actually changing lives out there. And I don't say that lightly, because there are people doing incredible things with print out there. And I'm going to show you some amazing examples that, that are, I mean, quite frankly, mind-blowing. But in this bespoke economy that we have, how do you create these special, personal, interesting pieces that are in one word relevant to people and actually change their minds or alter their states. Again, that's a human to human connection that we're looking for. And I'd play the Robert Downey Jr. really cool Iron Man 3D printed bionic arm for limbless children because it was a really amazing piece. But this is the piece I want to focus on, which is Pirate 3D, because this is changing people's lives and I'm gonna play this piece for you and, and you'll see why. We used to go every winter to Vail, Colorado to enjoy the skiing season there. The snow was carrying me and that I could be in control of myself, just following my guide's instructions and letting myself glide on the snow. And uh, it, was, it was perfect because I could fly Memories for me as a blind person are almost like dreams. It's like a gust of wind. It's there and it's gone, but you can have it forever. And if I can touch the picture that brings all emotions to life. Awesome. <laughs> I remember this hat. <laughs> this creates a whole sensation because I can I can really recall that moment and it makes it just like touchable if I can say that word. It's kind of a something that's there forever. You talk about playing to the senses and playing to that emotional quotient. Yes, okay, we're talking about 3D printing, but wow, like to actually think about that human engagement and how it will change someone's life is incredible. So how are we using technology today as that tool and driving something that's got a greater sense of purpose in it? This one is just pure awesomeness and uh, when we saw this, we just said, this is a game changer. A million people die each year from water-related disease. But the even bigger problem? Most of them don't even know their water is unsafe to drink in the first place. 
That's why Water is Life, partnering with scientists and engineers at Carnegie Mellon and the University of Virginia, set out to invent a solution that solves both of these problems. Introducing the Drinkable Book, the first ever tool that teaches safe water habits and is printed on technologically advanced filter paper capable of killing deadly waterborne diseases. My name is Terry Dinkovich. I am a chemist. I invented a paper that purifies drinking water. After passing water through our filter, we found a reduction of greater than 99.9% .9 in bacteria count, which is comparable to the tap water in this country. The book uses a brand new type of paper that works like a scientific coffee filter. Each piece is coated with silver nanoparticles, which kill diseases like cholera, E. coli, and typhoid. The orange color of the paper is a direct result of the addition of the silver nanoparticles. And at the end of the day, the most important thing, and really the hero of this whole project, is the technology behind it. The book itself works in three easy steps. Simply tear out a filter, slide it into the custom filter box, and pour contaminated water through. What comes out is safe to drink. The content on each page, printed in food grade ink, educates people about safe water habits, things that we take for granted, such as keeping trash and feces away from your water source. But the best part of the book isn't just that it purifies water or teaches proper sanitation, it's the fact that this filter paper will revolutionize water purification. It costs only pennies to produce, making it by far the cheapest option on the market, and it's extremely sustainable. Each filter is capable of giving someone up to 30 days worth of clean water, and each book is capable of providing someone with clean water for up to four years. To learn how you can provide a filter book for a community in need, head to waterislife.com. Okay, so if I'm gonna put my, uh, my wizard hat on for a second, that gets my meritorious, onerous, indubitous relinquishment of awesomeness, because that was incredible. I mean, that is a game changer. That, that, that will change people's lives. So I'm gonna end this little party behind the green curtain with a little fun and interesting world into the world of conductive ink and this Bex piece and let's just sort of take you from that heavier two sets to something a little crazier. And there's that mixing, marrying, matching up that confluence of print and digital to do something totally unexpected, totally cool, captures people's attention, and again, just wows them. So, that is the end of my sort of world behind the green curtain today. If you bring us the broomstick of the Wicked Witch of the West, you can get a free physical book out in the lobby. It's got all of our different examples in it. Um, you can go to the, the online version and, and link to all the videos. And that's our little peek into the world of print in a digital world. Thank you.